Hello and welcome back to another video where I'm going to be showing you how to solve the Tower of Hanoi problem in Python. Last week I did this in C, the link to that video and the code, the link to that video will be in the description and the code for this video will also be in the description. The goal of Tower of Hanoi is to move all of the rings from one tower to, to the end tower, with no matter how many rings there are this should always work. The thing is you can never have a bigger ring on top of a smaller ring which is why it's a challenge. The way you solve this problem is you solve it with recursion. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. So let's open up VS Code and let's create ourselves a new function. Oh, things are falling. That is not good. So we're going to start ourselves making ourselves a new function and we're going to call this function uh, solve because that's quite easy. So def solve and then we're going to open up some brackets and we're going to do number of disks and then we're going to pass in start end and temp and then we're going to put ourselves a colon at the end and go down a line the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to check how many disks are on the pole or the wooden dow thing so we're going to do if number of disks is equal equal to one, we know we can move it to the end, and then that pole will be end will be emptied. So what we're going to do with that is we're just going to print. We're going to open up some brackets. We're going to then say move. And I, if it's too fast to follow along, uh, feel free to pause the video, and then at the end of the coding, I will explain what each step does and how it works. So move disk one from rod and then we are going to close speech marks do start let's put ourselves in a space just to make that easier to read start and then we're going to put ourselves in another comma to rod close that put ourselves in another comma and then end not in speech marks. And then the next line we are going to just return. And this will break that cycle of the recursion because this we're going to be solving recur recursively. And this is where this task is normally used in solving recursion or teaching people to solve recursion. How many times can I say recursion in one video? The next step we're going to want to do is we're going to want to move another ring. Because if we haven't moved our final disk to the end rod, we're going to have to move it to the temp rod. And the way we do that is by recalling our function. So we're going to go solve. And then we're going to do number of disks again. Minus one. We're then going to start. And then temp and then end. And the, the difference between all of our recursions, and we'll write in the last one and then I'll try and explain it. But the values on each variable or thing that we're passing in don't change other than when they're being subtracted. But the order of our pillars we move, and by moving our pillars we'll change where the disk goes. That's quite a hard thing to visualize so once we run it it kind of makes more sense so there we go and now we're going to go print because we're going to want to see what we're doing brackets move disk and then we want to do number of disk from rod so I'm going to call this a rod here, and then we want to do start, like we did at the top, and then two rod, and end. The next thing we're going to want to do, so if this is put our, rod, our disks onto our end disk, or in a, or our temp disk, temp rod, because if we go back to our picture, we've got our start, we've got this temporary pole that we can put things on while we're moving it. 
And the reason we need to have that temporary pole is because disk sizes can't be one above the other. So we're going to put it onto our, we're going to put our first disk onto our end pole, our next one onto our temporary pole, and then we're going to move it back and forwards and so on until we've moved them all across. This picture is a nicer kind of representation of what we do. One onto our temp disks, the next one, we then move it across, forwards, back, and so on and so on. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to call our function again, and we're going to solve number of disks, and we're going to minus that by one. And then this one time we'll be moving from temp with end being our middle pole, and then start being the one we're going to. And then we're going to run this, so we're going to do solve, let's say five, and then we're going to call it our pillars A, B, and C. There we go, and now let's give that a run. Uh, new machine so we've always got this pain there we go and as you can see we've moved our discs around so we've moved to disc number two from rod a to rod c we then moved to disc one and then you can see the order of how we've moved stuff about so now we're going to try and explain this a bit better that's annoying me <laughs> we didn't keep the same catalyzation everywhere it doesn't really matter actually it doesn't matter at all it all runs the same, but that just looks a bit nicer when it's all neatly in rows. Okay, so now I will go do the explanation of how does this work. The way this works is we're first... Let's get our image up. First thing we're doing is we're checking that we've only got, if we've got one disc left in the pole. So if we go down to this photo, if you've only got one disc, as you can see in image 6, we know we just need to move it across and then we are done. However, if we have more than one disc, so like this image, we want to remove one disc, so we want to take it off A, and then we're going to want to put it on pillar B. Now, we're going to then want to print out that moving, so we know. And then our next command, we want to get from our temp one, so that would be from B, or in our case C, onto B. And then using this temp pole, we can kind of move all of our disks around. I think that kind of makes sense. I hope that kind of makes sense. Anyway, so, so thank you for watching. The code is in the description. I hope I will see you in the next video. I hope you learned how recursion works, and yeah, thank you all. See you next time.